Hello, my name's Ben. And my name's Josh. And welcome back to FPL Graduates and welcome back to another video where we're going to be running through an early wildcard for you guys who are looking to potentially wildcard going into this next game week. Yeah, our main advice would be to hold it until that international break. I think it's going to be crucial and a lot of fixture swings hanging about that time. But I know a few of you are a bit early and like to, you know, proceed with the wild card. So we're going to take a look at what players you should be looking at for the short to medium term on this wild card. Um, some key assets to have in your teams as well. Right, let's get cracking into the goalkeepers of this wild card. I don't think we have to touch on them for too long because they're pretty obvious picks. Nick Pope in goal, 5.1 million. He's had a price rise this week for obvious reasons. I think Newcastle have been a decent defensive side. Um, Fixtures-wise as well, they're looking good. So West Ham away, not the easiest, but they do have Bournemouth at home, Fulham away, Brentford at home, United away, Everton at home. You know, that run up until pretty much the um, World Cup area is pretty good. They only face, what, three of the top seven of last season, which is pretty decent in that fixture span. What's your thoughts on Nick Pope, Ben? Are you a fan of this Newcastle defence? Yeah, the Newcastle defence is looking very good. They've looked resolute in recent weeks and I believe they're going to continue that. Nick Pope as well gets save points too. Um, he could be this season's Ramsdale and those who are lo looking to offload Ramsdale, this could be the guy to go to. Um, so yeah, I think he's the perfect choice to have. And then you've obviously got Danny Ward as well there. He's just a cheap fodder keeper. It's a bonus that he plays, but for me, Nick Pope will probably be in there most weeks. Yeah, I'd probably play Pope against the likes of um, Spurs, United, those big teams, because like you mentioned, he gets save points. Against Palace at the weekend, he had nine saves, which is absolutely crazy. Danny Ward as well, that Leicester defence looks terrible. Ward himself doesn't look too, too sharp in goal. So it wouldn't shock me if maybe Iverson came in or something along those lines. So, but he is good to have on the bench as a bit of fodder. Okay, so moving on into the defence, and this is where it gets very controversial with the FPL graduates. We've gone for Fafana at 4.4 million. Now, I think at 4.4 million, he's the best value in that price bracket um, for, for any defender, really, um, at that price. Fantastic. You can't argue with that. Reese James at 6 million. It's a double up in Chelsea defence, despite what we've seen. Um, the reasoning behind that is we see the fixture run looking quite tasty going forwards. And I think Chelsea defence really can only improve um, going forwards. There's a few teams in there that do struggle to score goals. So hopefully that Chelsea defence will look better going forwards. Then we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, who, despite Liverpool's fragility in defence, is still producing the most chances, the most big chances out of any defender and more than most midfielders as well. His creativity, as you can see, is burst in FPL. So that's why we kept him. I do think he'll get returns against the likes of Chelsea away and that sort of thing. Emerson at four million is a potential now playing four million pound defender for a team that's much better than Nottingham Forest defensively. Um, so as you can see, he played 90 minutes against Chelsea there. And looking at his fixtures coming up as well, they are looking fantastic. And the last defender we've gone is Jao Cancelo. We think that in that City team, despite the fixtures getting a little bit more rocky, Cancelo can be the guy to produce returns still. We still see his attacking threat and his attacking potential, despite the regression in the statistics. So I believe that for now, Cancelo is one that you should definitely consider in your wildcard team. Yeah, he's one that you know is nailed in that City defence as well. Carl Walker is out for the next few weeks, I think until the international break as well. So um, he's going to be in that team week in, week out. Moving on to the midfield, we've gone a pretty budget, to be fair, across the whole midfield. We'll start off with Martinelli. I think at his price, to have someone of an Arsenal attacker in that team, it's a no-brainer. Um, you know, 6.5 million now, but... Uh, myself and Ben, we've both had him since the start. So he's only costing us 6.2 million. Fixtures wise, you've got to have him right now if you're wildcard in this week. You've got Everton at home, Brentford away. Yes, it gets a bit tougher with Tottenham, Liverpool. They then have Leeds, which I think is a very good fixture. And not a lot of people have Arsenal players given, you know, they face Liverpool and City after and before that. So I think he's a good little option to have there and very highly owned at the moment too. Next up is Marcus Rashford. He's actually got the four, joint fourth top scorer in FPL all season at the minute. That is definitely inflated from that Arsenal score. Um, United have Crystal Palace and Leeds next to then face City, but then have Everton and Newcastle after that. So I think he's a very good option, especially if he's playing up front still throughout those games. 
Third option is Jarrod Bowen. And it's just because of these West Ham fixtures. We mentioned it with Emerson. Those next, what, eight fixtures, they're really good. Yes, he's not had an attack and return yet this season, but I think he's going to be a good asset. What's your thoughts on Jarrod Bowen, then? Yeah, I mean, West Ham can only get better from here. And Jarrod Bowen is the main man to make that all click. Once Bowen's in form, West Ham will be in form. And uh, the fixtures just write themselves. I think West Ham will be looking decent going forward. Yes, uh, it's not been great to start with, but it can only improve the introduction of Lucas Paqueta as well. That can only be a good thing for Jared Bowen's output. Up next is someone that we probably all think or should have in our team. It's going to be Andreas Pereira, 4.5 million. He's a steal at that price, to be honest. He should be probably 5 million, if not more. Fulham going forwards have been great. He's on set pieces. Uh, Fixture-wise, Fulham have some decent ones going forward as well until game week 14. Only Chelsea there uh, this week. That's really a problem for Fulham. So, yeah, looking good. I'd probably have him no matter what anyway. If they have bad fixtures because of the price, he'll be on the bench most weeks. But at least you know you might have some points there to rely on. Finally, in the midfield, it's going to be Luis Sinistera. Two goals in his last two game weeks. Leeds have some decent fixtures the next four. He's probably one of the players that we'd look to move out first, um, given the fixture run for Leeds gets a bit sour after that. Um, but yeah, he's been very good. He's got a good eye for goal. We spoke about him a lot in our transfer targets video this week. So make sure you check that out as well. OK, so moving on to the strike force. And well, we've spent our money on the strike force. I think very well. Uh, we've got Harry Kane, who's consistently been producing returns. And despite sort of not many people owning him, he's he's producing returns left, right and centre. Um, he's been a really good asset for owners to own. And I think having him in your team is going to be a good idea. He can score against literally anyone. That North London derby is perfect for him to go, you know what, say to Arteta, I'm going to have a piece of that and score a penalty or two. Um, who knows? Um, but yeah, next up in the team, we've got Mitrovic, who, again, he could score against anyone at the moment. He's got six returns already this season. And, you know, the one game where he didn't get a return, he missed a penalty. So, like, he could have quite easily have returned in every single game so far this season, which would have been, you know, no player in the game's done that. Not even Haaland has done that. Um, so I think at 6.8 million, he's an absolute steal. And then finally, Erling Haaland, who would go without him? Um, fantastic form. 10 goals is genuinely ridiculous. Top of the metrics for pretty much everything. Um, what more can I say about him? He's, he's a must-have, a must-captain every week as well. Um, so there you go. He should be much higher than the 78.5% that he's currently owned. So that's the team. What do you guys think? Okay, so that rounds up the video and our wildcard team, if you're wildcarding this week. And like we said, uh, we would prefer to wildcard before game week nine. Um, so over that international break, just because we know the international break can throw up a load of surprises and injuries and, and stuff that we sort of weren't expecting just because a lot of international teams play a lot of games in an extremely short space of time. So it promotes a lot of injuries to happen. But yeah, let us know what you guys think of that wildcard. Are you wildcarding this week? Let us know if you are and who you've got in your team. Yeah, if you haven't already, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you're new here. We're on the road to 3K subs, so make sure you help us out getting there. And I've been Josh. Oh, I've been Ben. <laughs> and we'll see you later. Have a good game week, everyone. <laughs>